أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رب الأولين والآخرين وقيوم السماوات والأرضين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله شافع يوم الدين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على طريقه وسلك سبيله ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون As your brothers and sisters know legislation has been passed to control the spread of the coronavirus otherwise known as COVID-19 the implementations of which you will start seeing immediately within this next week and as a result of this the masjid has taken very, very necessary precautions to help in this fight against this virus. We have derived 11 key points, 11 key advices that we need all the Muslims, and especially in this congregation, to implement and to act upon. Number one, avoid attending the masjid if you are mildly sick. Even if you are mildly sick, avoid attending the masjid the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man akal al-basla, the one who eats onion, wa or garlic, fala yaqribanna masjidina, do not come near the masjid. This is about someone who ate from a fruit or from a vegetable that has odor or smell. And for him not to disturb the worshippers in the masjid, for him not to bring discomfort in the masjid, the messenger forbade him to enter the mosque. So what about the one who is sick? What about the one who is ill? is more deserving of him and more worthy of him that he keeps himself away from the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا عدوى, There is no disease except by the decree of Allah Subhanahu. And then he said, لا يورد ممرض, Do not mix the sick or musihin with the healthy. The limitation of the sunnah is not only for the masjid. Do not mix the sick with the healthy applies to the marketplace. It applies to the stores, to the shops. It applies to the banks. The one who is sick should keep himself isolated until his symptoms resolve. Number two, to use the toilet facilities, the bathroom facilities in your own home and to make wudu in your own home before coming to the masjid. The Prophet wasallam said, Man fi baytihi, The one who makes wudu in his house, ثُمَّ مَشَى إِلَىٰ بَيْتِ مِنْ بَيُوتِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And then he comes to the mosque of Allah لِيَقْضِيَ فَرِيضَةً مِنْ فَرَائِدِ اللَّهِ And he wants to fulfill one of his obligations, he wants to pray a salah. خَطْوَتَاهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَحَدُّ خَطِيئَةً One step that he takes to the masjid, after making wudu at home, his sins will be expiated for it. وَالْأُخْرَى The second step that he takes, دَرُفَعُ دَرَجَةً his, his ranks will be elevated and raised. So this is not only in a time of illness, rather the sunnah is to make wudu at home anyway. For the reward is greater. You are expiated from your sins and also your darajat and your, your ranks are raised. So now it's even more so a reason for us to implement the sunnah. Number three, you are advised to bring your own prayer mass to the masjid. You are advised to bring your own masallah to the masjid and pray upon that to avoid contact with the carpet and keep that as minimal as possible. Number four and number five, collectively, the masjid has taken a step to shorten the prayers. The five daily prayers will be shortened, as in, they will be less long. They will still be complete rak'at, but they will be shortened lengthwise, and also the Jum'ah Salah and the Khutbah will be shortened to 10 minutes, and this is until further notice. We will pray, start our khutbah at 10 past 1, and we will try to finish at 1.20 until further notice. The Prophet wasallam said, إِذَا صَلَّى أَحَدُكُمْ لِلنَّاسِ If any one of you leads the people in prayer, if you are imam anywhere, فَلْيُخَفِّفْ Lighten your prayer, make it short and easy. Why? فَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ Amongst you there are people, الضعيف, weak, السقيم, ill, والكبير, elderly. وَإِذَا صَلَّى أَحَدُكُمْ لِنَفْسِي If any one of you prays at home by himself, فَلْيُطَوَّلْ مَا شَاءَ Make it as long as you want. لا بأس, no problem, insha'Allah. The sixth point, 
praying your sunnah and your nawafila at home, praying your voluntary prayers and your sunnah prayers at home. The Prophet said, إِذَا قَضَى أَحَدُكُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فِي مَسْجِدِي If any one of you has completed his prayer in the masjid, فَلْيَجْعَلْ لِبَيْتِهِ نَصِيبًا مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ Let him complete his prayer at home. Let him complete his voluntary prayers, his sunnah prayers. Let him complete his prayer at home. Why? Allah will bring a lot of good from him praying at home. Allah will bring about a lot of goodness and barakah in his house by him praying at home. There are so many narrations that encourage the Muslims to pray the sunnah and the nawafila at home. The Prophet said, the one who prays in an area where no one can see him, i.e. his house, this prayer is 25 times greater than if he prays Haythu Yarahun Nas in an area where people can see him. So this is the Sunnah anyway. It's encouraged for you to pray your Salah at home, your voluntary prayers, your Nawafila at home, and now we have even more of a reason to do so. Number seven, avoid handshaking and hugging at all costs. Initiate the salam and say your greetings. The Prophet وسلم, said, Inna awla nasi billah, the best people to Allah subhana, man bada'ahum bis salam, the ones who greet, initiate the greeting of salam verbally. So we can still be a part of this. We can still achieve and implement this. The shaking of hands is a beautiful sunnah, but not necessary and not a wajib. Number eight, read the hygiene literature in and around the masjid and also the use of hand sanitizers and so on and so forth. We haven't been able to provide that just yet due to the shortage. However, use soap and water as well. Research has shown that soap and water is more effective than hand sanitizers. Combine the both, combine the both and be moderate and use them when possible. And number nine and most importantly, anyone over the age of 60 with underlying health issues, it is not allowed for you to pray in the masjid. I'm really sorry. The ulama in Saudi Arabia, the ulama in Kuwait, the ulama in Qatar also, they all sat and had a meeting. The major senior ulama, the scholars of this ummah, about whom Allah says, if you dispute, turn back to Ahlul Ilm, go back to them. They have said, it is forbidden. It is forbidden for anyone over the age of 60 with any underlying health conditions, diabetes, high, high blood pressure, any heart-related sickness or condition, any condition in their liver, anything, any underlying health issues, you are more at risk of catching something. This is a precaution for yourself. This is a safety measure only for yourself to protect you and you alone. It is impermissible for you to attend the masjid if you have any underlying health conditions and more so if you have any symptoms such as runny nose, headaches, anything like that. Please act upon this advice that the scholars have given us. Number 10, if anyone needs support, if anyone is self-isolating and they need support, contact the masjid. We will go above and beyond to help you, inshallah. And this brings me on to the final point, number 11. Anyone who, comes, who wants to come forward and volunteer and help those who are vulnerable in this situation, please come forward, give your contact details so we can form a small unit, a small team, and we can help those who are staying at home and not coming to the masjid, and we can help them with their groceries, their shopping, and running their various errands. These precautions that have been taken, brothers and sisters, are very, very sensible, very, very necessary in guidance and following the orders from the central government, also Public Health England, also all of them are from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is most important to us. And in any case, in any case, anyone who prays at home and leaves the Jum'ah, he has to pray four rak'at. He can't pray two at home. The Jum'ah is only two in the masjid. If he prays at home, which he's allowed to, he has to pray all four. This is an advice that you have to give to each other, your family members, members of your social groups, your friends, your colleagues. Perhaps they have attended a masjid where such an advice has not been given. Tell them, share the word. Inshallah, they implement it and they share it. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Man dalla ala khayrin, whoever guides someone to any goodness, falahu mithlu ajri fa'ili, he will be rewarded like the one who acted upon it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina min kulli dhanbin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. The, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said something very, very important. And I will finish very, very quick. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man tatabbaba wa lam yu'lam minhu tibbun qabla thalik. The one who preaches 
the one who gives anyone medical advice or practices medicine without any prior knowledge of medicine, فَهُوَ ضَامِنٌ He will be held liable. And this is a big problem. People are telling people their own two pence worth. Telling them about the health, telling them about medical conditions, treatments. If you are not a health professional, if you are not a doctor, don't say anything. Don't say anything. You do not want to be held liable on Yawm Al-Qiyamah for giving someone the wrong information. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Make sure you are saying your morning and evening adhkar. Bismillah, alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ard wa la fil sama wa huwa samiyu al-alim. Three times in the morning, three times in the evening, upon the tongue of the messenger, nothing will afflict you from morning to evening. Nothing will afflict you from evening till morning. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق something else to be said in the morning and also in the evening and also the dua for illness اللهم إني أعوذ بك من البرص والجذام والجنون والجذام والجذام ومن سيء الأصفام Oh Allah protect us from leprosy from mutilation, from craziness and insanity, and also from any, any serious epidemic illness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, allow us to take the necessary precautions. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid Ya hayu ya قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تقلنا إلى أنفسنا ترفة عين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون